Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, February 14th, 2014. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, sadistic cops choke and tase a deaf man for being unresponsive. Then, the U.S. Army's fake city, a training ground for the military occupation of America. And Steve Pachenik reveals the structure for the military takeover already in place. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, the U.S. Army has built a fake city in Virginia for what they say is to prepare their troops to occupy foreign countries. But what's striking is this 300-acre fake city looks more like your average American town. It costs $96 million to build in just two years, and it includes a sports stadium, bank, a school, and an underground subway. They say it's in order to train for unspecified future combat scenarios. But the fact that the subway carriages even carry the same logo as they do in Washington, D.C., this could suggest that the site was built to double both as a foreign city and a mock domestic town. The site also includes what they're calling a mosque, but it looks eerily familiar to a Christian church. So they're saying this is for foreign occupation. Please, come on. They are training for martial law, civil unrest. They have already been preparing for the gun owners and the Christians and anyone with an anti-government attitude to be trained to be seen as an insurrectionist. They're already training the military to see patriots as insurrectionists. The writing is on the wall. It is time to get real, folks. No matter how much the mainstream media and the Obama administration tries to convince you that they're just trying to take the guns because Sandy Hook, y'all, Please, the writing is on the wall. It is time for us to wake up. And that's why I would say it's, it's an unprecedented move that Fox News is now carrying InfoWars articles covering the very fact that the DHS is arming themselves. They have up on foxnews.com Paul Joseph Watson's article about the Homeland Security purchasing those zombie hunter bullets. Now, the mainstream media, they've, they've covered our material before, but they'll typically just take our material and then accredit it to their own writers after they do their own research. But what's really big here is it's Paul Joseph Watson's actual article credited back to InfoWars. It doesn't just have some vague reference to a, quote, conspiracy website. That's because this is a fact. This is an unprecedented purchase of ammunition that makes no sense. Fox News can see the writing on the wall, and this is facts. Anyone can go look that up on the FedBizOps site, something where they're looking for FEMA trailers. That's all there. It's fact. Just go look it up like we do. Do you really think, though, that a government that's, you know, they have no problem killing innocent children overseas or using chemical weapons to destroy an entire country and the nation's genetic makeup of their children's children, do you really think that they're not going to turn on you or they're going to have some problem offing you and getting rid of you? Absolutely not. You're the zombies. That's why they need the zombie hunter bullets. It's probably funny to them. And... I mean, look at every day, you know, with the police, week after week. Do you really think the police are going to have any problem turning against you and me? They're already training every day. They say that a society will be judged by the way that it treats its weakest members. And here we have another case of police brutality against a deaf person. Now, this is the second deaf person that has been attacked by this out-of-control police department for refusing to respond to their demands during a routine call-out. Last time, it was a guy that didn't hear the sirens behind his car. Well, in this lawsuit that was filed by John Meester, he says that he attempted to use sign language to explain to the cops that he couldn't hear them when they confronted him outside of his friend's home. He was removing boxes of his own possessions. There was some snitchy, see something, say something neighbor who called police because Meester was acting suspiciously after he failed to respond to the neighbor calling him from across the street. Now, because he is deaf, Mr. Meester depends on using his hands while facing a person to communicate. And the officer's sudden aggression, which both caused him pain and interfered with his ability to communicate, is what caused him to reflexively pull his hands away and hop over a fence and step toward a gate so he could create some space to communicate with these cops. 
That was when one of the officers shot him twice with a taser. Another officer then deployed a second taser, delivering what's called a drive stun to his abdomen. Then they struck him with fists and feet and forcibly took him to the ground. The cops kicked him, punched him in the back and stomach, and another cop choked him around the neck. The suit also alleges that the cops delivered punishing shocks with the tasers intentionally burning his flesh. And then, of course, after they beat this man unconscious, they charged him with assault because that's what they do. If you try to protect yourself against the vicious beatdown of an out-of-control police department, you're going to be charged with assaulting them, even though they're tasering you and beating you and punching and kicking you. And even if they're caught on video doing it, they're still going to get away with it, much like this other disabled man who was wheelchair bound, the cop was caught on video viciously attacking him. That cop, he was found not guilty of all charges. So this is just one of a number of untold cases of police beating and tasering physically and mentally disabled people across the nation. But is it any wonder why we have an out of control police force our military is training to, to for domestic terrorists. It goes all the way up to the top. Look at our nation's leader, Mr. I can do whatever I want. He basically told the French president earlier this week that it's good to be king. Well, you know, that's complete 180 from the 2008 Obama that was running the election circuit. He said that he would reverse the biggest problem of executive abuse of power, promising to avoid Bush's mistake of not going through Congress at all. He went on to say how I taught constitutional law for 10 years. I take the Constitution very seriously. Please. The only thing he uses his constitutional law knowledge for is how to slither through any little blurred lines in the in the writing there. Mr. Magic Pen of 2014 has said that he would act with or without Congress to pursue his agenda, taking steps without legislation via executive orders to achieve his Goal. And that's exactly what he has continued to do, and he gets a round of applause from the New World Order who are pulling his strings. But that's why it's time for the media to stop licking this man's boots. He is becoming a dictator right before our eyes. What do you think? Do you think that you're going to be just having tea and crumpets while the rest of us are fighting for our lives under martial law? Do you really think that you're going to be safe? No. It's time for you to, to make a choice, to take a stand, much like Fox News is apparently doing now, publishing our articles and attributing it to us. So we'll get hits back to Infowars.com so people can go and get some truth news. But it's time to take a stand. Things are getting out of control. But, oh, you know, maybe the mainstream media is just going to say that I'm racist because I'm criticizing Obama. But ironically, they're criticizing the only black U.S. Supreme Court justice, Clarence Thomas, because he doesn't think that people need to be bringing race into everything. He said that he's faced more racism from liberal elites because of his conservative outlook than he did growing up in the 60s in Savannah, Georgia. He said, my sadness is that we are probably today more race and difference conscious than I was in the 60s when I went to school. Thomas said that he was probably the first black kid in Savannah, Georgia, to go to a white school, and rarely did the race issue come up. But today, name a day it doesn't come up. Differences in race, differences in sex, somebody doesn't look at you right, somebody says something, everybody is sensitive. Cla Clarence Thomas said, if I had been as sensitive as that in the 1960s, I'd still be in Savannah. Now, following this, Democrat Alvin Holmes responded by insulting Thomas's interracial marriage and then calling him an Uncle Tom. A CNN segment also implied that Thomas himself was being racist for wanting to move on from race even being an issue. Isn't that ironic? Now, Michael Dorstowitz writes, when conservatives disagree with the nation's first black president, they're often labeled as racist. But when liberals disagree with the nation's only black Supreme Court justice, all at once, it's the justice who's the racist. I find it difficult to follow this line of reasoning. And I do as well. But that's just the big problem. Race baiters do not like being called out. 
And they also don't like it when you try to take away their political playing card. But unfortunately, it's a card they've played one too many times, and the people just aren't buying it anymore. And people like Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas are saying, enough is enough. And so now they're attacking him, calling him a racist. But fortunately, some members of Congress are finally standing up to this Orwellian takeover of our country. First, Rand Paul la launched his civil lawsuit against Obama for allowing this unconstitutional spying by the NSA. Now his father, Ron Paul, is demanding clemency for Edward Snowden. On Paul's website, there's a petition that's posted saying Edward Snowden shocked the world when he exposed the NSA's illegal and abusive spying program. But instead of applauding him for his bravery and patriotism, the U.S. government labels Snowden a traitor. And the page states now, join Ron Paul in demanding that Edward Snowden is granted clemency. Sign the petition. Let's bring Edward home before his amnesty expires on July 31st of this year. So here, this is where we just have to hope that these small deeds, even the small deed of signing on to this pet petition, signing up to join Rand Paul's lawsuit against Obama for the unconstitutional NSA spying, even just these small deeds, we have to just hope that they can be the big move that helps us turn the tide of tyranny into our favor, because it's definitely getting out of hand. As you can see, they are now building fake cities to train for martial law. It's time to wake up. It is time to get real. Now, coming up later in the show, we're going to have part two of our interview with Steve Pachenik. He's going to give his view on Edward Snowden as well as break down how the intelligence community is playing the American public. That's a must-see. That's why we did an extra-long extended interview with Pachenik. And then, of course, stick around after that for even more special reports. Thanks, guys, for tuning in tonight. Have a happy Valentine's Day. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15 percent off super male vitality at infowarslife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement visit infowarslife.com today to secure your super male vitality infowarslife.com We're on the march, the empire's on the run, and the InfoWars army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Well, tonight we have the conclusion of our interview with Dr. Steve Pachinik, someone who has served at very high levels in the intelligence community over five U.S. administrations. He talks about a wide variety of subjects from Putin to the Ukraine to the...